This is session one, a transition overview, how to add, modify, and delete transitions. The goals for this session are to show you how to select an edit point or clip, how to apply the default transition, how to apply a transition from the transition browser, including how to replace one transition with another. I'll show you how to modify a transition by adjusting the icon and by adjusting the on-screen controls. And I'll show you how to remove a transition. Apple says there are three types of transitions, a fade to or from black, a cross dissolve between two video clips, and a wipe between two video clips. I would argue that there's a fourth transition, which is a cut. <laughs> but we already know how to do a cut. A cut implies a change in perspective, and this should always be your first choice in transitions. A dissolve implies a change in time or place, and it also carries the emotion from the earlier scene into the later one. My personal favorite dissolve is one that lasts for two-thirds of a second. A wipe totally breaks the story and takes us somewhere else. You only use wipes when you want to interrupt the story. I mean, the fastest way to say this is an amateur video is to use wipes excessively. Transitions require handles. Handles are extra video before the in and after the out. We can see that here in this illustration on the top left side. That part of the clip that's a lighter color is what we see inside the timeline as our project plays back. That which is dim on the top row is handles after the out. That which is dim on the bottom row is handles before the in. When we highlight an edit point, if it has no handle, the edge is red. And if it does have a handle, the edge is yellow, as you can see in this illustration here. Now there's a way to deal with clips that have no handles, and we'll discuss that in the next movie. Transitions are stored in the transition browser, and they're grouped by category, and they can be searched using the name of the transition. What's a neat new feature is that you can create your own transitions and save them in the transition browser for later use. To apply the default video transition, which is a crossfade, select the edit point and press Command-T. To apply any other transition, do one of two things. Drag the transition from the transition browser to the edit point, or select the edit point first, then double-click the transition in the transition browser. When you apply the default video transition, the audio is automatically crossfaded by the same duration. However, if the audio is detached or expanded, this audio transition is not applied, and we'll talk more about audio transitions later in this chapter. So let me show you how to select a single edit point or a clip, how to apply the default video transition, how to use the transition browser, how to apply a transition from the transition browser to a clip, how to replace an existing transition with a new one, how to modify a transition either for its duration or for its effect, and how to remove a transition. Here's a simple project of two clips that we can use to show how transitions work. To apply a transition, you first have to select either an edit point or a clip. For instance, if I click here on the edit point, either the in or the out, and type Command T, Command T automatically applies the default transition. We see it does a crossfade from one shot to the next. Command Z to undo that. If I select an entire clip and type Command T, notice that a transition has been applied to both ends of the selected clip. If I select all the clips in my sequence and type Command T, a transition is applied to both the beginning and the end of every clip that I have selected. But in our particular case, I'm going to work with just a single edit point, so I'll type Command Z and get rid of that. I'll select my edit point and type Command T. There's our transition. If I grab the wing of the transition and drag it left or right, I can make the transition longer, takes longer to achieve, or shorter, occurs more quickly. As I play through, notice I've got an orange render bar, but Final Cut will still play the transition as close to real time as it can, and if I leave my mouse still and don't touch the keyboard for a few seconds, our transition is instantly rendered in the background. And we'll talk about rendering in the next movie. If I need to delete a transition, highlight the transition and hit the Delete key. 
So to apply a transition, select the edit point, Command T, adjust its duration, and if I need to delete it, highlight the transition and hit delete. But there's a whole wealth of transitions that exist inside Final Cut 10 that are not immediately obvious. They're stored in the transition browser, which is this icon right here. When you click it, it reveals the transition browser. And our transitions are stored by category. There's blurs and there's lights, there's objects, there's opacity, there's stylized wipes and many more. Let's just try a simple transition. We'll go up to all and let's take, oh, let's see. Let's do a simple circle wipe. I'll grab the circle wipe and drag it from the transition browser, drop it on top of the edit point, click it, and we have a circle wipe that goes from one shot to the next. I'm simply pressing the spacebar and replaying that as opposed to looping. That's just me hitting it over and over again. Notice that I have a circle wipe here, so I'll put my playhead right in the middle of the circle. Let's say I wanted to replace that. And I know that I want to replace it with a, an effect that has the word zoom in it, but I can't remember where the zoom is located. Notice down here we have a search category. I'll just type zoom, and all the transitions that have the word zoom in their title appear. I'll grab the zoom pan, drag it over, wait for the transition to change color. And when it does, I let go, and the transition has now been replaced with this zoom pan. Doing a replace transition is exactly the same as doing a replace edit. You grab the transition you want, drag it on top of the existing transition until it turns white and let go. And now when I play this, we've got this nice zoom transition. Well, not only can we search for transitions by their file name, see this button here. This hides or reveals the transition library just as we have a similar button for the project library and the event library we also have the transition library well we can make adjustments to our transitions using what's called the on-screen controls we click on the transition and we see the on-screen control here for instance we can change where the zoom center is maybe i want the zoom to start over here or I want the zoom to start over there. I can grab the center control and drag it. Or I could click, hold, and drag and change it up here. Or I could click, hold, and drag and change the Y position. So you have an on-screen control that you can drag around. And you have the specific numbers that you can dial in. When we play this, there's our zoom effect. Well, let's try something else that also can be tweaked. Let's do a search, and I want to do a search for slide. And I've got this slide in. Grab the transition, drag it on top, and let go. And when I play it, we've got this effect which slides in. Select our transition, go up to the inspector, and change it from a rounded rectangle to an arrow. And let's change the color from blue to yellow. Oof, a little garish. Pink? Well, maybe. But I like purple. And now when we play this, a very nice moving transition that we have the ability to customize by using the on-screen controls. When you click the inspector button, and then you'll see there's our transition. Select the transition, click the inspector button, and make your changes. So what we've seen is that we can apply the default transition, which is a dissolve, by selecting the edit point and typing Command T, or go to the transition browser. And now we've got a wealth of transitions to select from. There's one more thing I almost forgot. Remember we could change the duration of the transition by grabbing one of these wings and dragging it left or right? You could also type Control D, which opens up the change duration window and type, I want a two second transition. Not two minutes, just two seconds. So let's try that again. Control D, two seconds, and I now have a two second transition or a 20 frame transition. Select the transition, type Control D, and that opens up the change duration here in the timecode window, and type in the duration that you want and preview it. 
Careful use of transitions is an essential part of visual storytelling. The key is not to use them to excess. If your audience suddenly sits up and says, whoa, that was a great transition, <laughs> they've probably lost sight of your story for a while. There are a wide variety of transitions to choose from to suit a wide variety of stories. Be sure you have sufficient handles for your transitions, and we will discuss audio-only transitions later in this chapter. My name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for watching this Final Cut Pro 10 training.